things in your life, they're only going to change with prayer. And prayer, the simplest definition is talking to God. I want you to all have this passion to pray with fire, to know that your prayers make a difference, to know that when you speak something out into the atmosphere, that it actually changes something. The Bible tells us that the affectionate, fervent prayers of righteous people, not perfect people, but people who have been made right with God through the blood of Jesus Christ, that's most of us in this room, it says that our prayers, everybody say work. Your prayer changes things. You can walk into a situation that is chaos and you can speak, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you that your peace is in this room right now. And you can, you don't got to be loud with it. You can be like, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you that your peace is in this room right now. Power doesn't come in volume. It comes in who's supporting you. And my Bible tells me if God be for me, who can be against me? And so I want you to go to a scripture that I really feel like all of us need to commit to memory so that we can be able to pray with fire. And it's going to take something of you. Look at 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. It says, Then if my people who were called by my name would humble themselves and pray. Everybody say pray. Like for you to pray, you're going to have to humble yourself. You're going to have to humble yourself. And when you humble yourself, then you come to God in a spirit like, God, I don't care about all of that other stuff. This doesn't, this doesn't matter. God, thank you for using me. But without all of that, you've been good. And I want to come to you and I want to come. I want to connect to you. And it says you humble yourselves and pray. And then it says, and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. That means you're going to have to do a couple things. You're going to have to humble yourself then you're going to have to seek. Now, I didn't say look. I said seek. If you lost your keys, you wouldn't just go, yeah, I don't know where my keys are. You would start moving things, turning stuff over. Stay until you found them. God's saying, I want you to have a passion after me that is not like, I prayed, nothing happened. Y'all know how we do. Like, like, pray about that. I just did. Nothing happened. No! You got to seek. Everybody say seek. seek. So the first thing we have to do is humble ourselves. And then we have to pray. And then we have to seek. And this is the crazy thing. And this is the thing nobody wants to do because this is the thing that's not popular. It says you have to turn from your wicked ways. That implies that all of us have some type of wicked way, even if other people don't know it. And the biblical word for this is we need to repent. And, and, and it's not deep. All repent means is if I'm going this way, repent means to turn. That's all repent me. God's saying, I need you to turn from the things that keep me away. Like sin is a thing that keeps me away. Like when you involuntarily sin and you, you keep putting me out, he was like, I'm here for you, but I need you to not turn to sin. I need you to turn to me. And so he's saying, all I need you to do is humble yourself. I need you to pray. I need you to seek me. I need you to turn from your wicked ways and then look at the promise. This is a crazy deal. Look what God promises all of us. He says, then I will hear you from heaven and I'll forgive your sins. You need your sins forgiven. And then this is the beautiful things. This translation says, I will restore your land. Another translation says, I will hear, heal your land. God says, if you do these four things, you humble yourself, you pray, you seek me, you turn from your wicked ways. He said, I'll hear you and I'll heal you. Like, like this is the power. And so when you get that confidence, like, okay, I can do that. And listen, this is the thing you got to know. You have to do it every day. Like every day you wake up, oh, I don't feel like praying, but I'm going to humble myself. All right, God, I'm going to give you these first three minutes instead of Instagram these first three minutes. Because some of us wake up and y'all know the first thing we do. Do I have any more followers? <laughs> and God says, but I thought you were my follower. Oh, that was nasty. I had to walk away and stink over there. Look, all I'm saying to you is it, like, I thought you were my follower. And I thought you were, you were checking what was on my feed today. Because I have a plan for you, a plan to prosper you, a plan to give you a hope and a future, something that was planned before you were even in your mother's womb. And so I'm going to humble myself, and then I'm going to do what? Pray. I'm going to humble myself and then do what? Pray. I'm going to humble myself and then do what? Pray. 
And, and when I do that, then that starts my seek for the day. See, see, I heard um, Smith Wilgerworth say this, and this really helped me because uh, my mom's a, a woman of prayer and I would wake up in the morning. She'd be praying like for hours and hours and hours. I was like, Lord, I'd be asleep if I had to pray that long. That's like four hours of prayer. Like, but she's very passionate and she prays with power. But then I heard this quote that helped me. Smith Wilgerworth said, he said, I never pray more than 20 minutes but I never go 20 minutes without praying. Like think about a life that is talking to God consistently. Like I'm in class and I'm talking to God. Like I'm, I'm at lunch and I'm still talking to God. I'm walking past people and I'm praying for people. I'm talking to God on behalf of somebody else. I'm interceding for them. Instead of laughing at their problem, I'm saying, Father God, heal their insecurity. Let them not be able to do that anymore. Matter of fact, I'm going to be loving hands and feet. I'm going to listen because God doesn't want prayer to be a monologue where you're just talking. He wants it to be a dialogue. So when I'm praying and I'm going throughout my day and, I'm, I'm, and I see that girl and, and she's feeling low and doing something that, that maybe exposes her insecurities and I'm praying and I'm saying, God, please help her not do that. And then God whispers back to me and I get a strong impression on my heart. Go over there and talk to her. Uh-oh. No. <laughs> That, 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 would, that would require me putting myself out there and what if, and we go through all this other stuff and God's saying, hey, hey. This is not a monologue in prayer. This is a dialogue in prayer. I want you to know that when you prayed for it, I'm not sending an answer another way. You may be the answer. Ooh. See, so many of us want God to provide an answer besides us. And so we'll pray something like, God, please help that family have a great Christmas. He said, give them your Christmas money. No, 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 that's not what I was saying, God. What I was saying is, could you please provide somebody else? You better be careful what you pray. Because God doesn't want us to just be ones who pray. He wants us to be answers to prayer. This is part of praying with fire, is knowing that sometimes you'll be the answer. And, and, and what ends up happening is most of us need to see this. And this is probably one of the main points I want you to see is that God's people pray out of love. We don't, we don't pray in lust. Like, 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 like most of the things that I used to pray for was things that I lusted for. Like, like, Lord, please, could you please make a way for me to get them new shoes, Lord? And, and I was desiring something instead of someone. See, the end result of prayer should be God being closer to you, not something God could provide. What if you had a relationship was, that was only based on what you could give the person? Like, what if they came up to you all the time and they were like, hey, what's going on, Becky? I love you. You look cute. Um, can I have your hat? Can I have your, could you provide for me this? Could you provide? That wouldn't be a real friendship. That would just be a business partner. And that would be transactional. And when you needed to call somebody, you wouldn't call them because all they wanted you for is what you had. I wonder how God feels. When people, the only time they talk to him is when they need him to save them. How many of y'all, come on, let's be real. Let's be hot, humble, open and transparent. How many of you have prayed a prayer like this? God, if you get me out of this situation, I promise I'll. Oh, come on, everybody in the room, lift your hands. Because many times the only time we talk to God is because we've lusted for something or maybe gotten ourselves in a wrong situation or maybe hooked up with the wrong people or maybe did something we weren't supposed to or maybe didn't study for the test and we want God to somehow transfer all the information into our heads or whatever the thing is. Like, like maybe we're doing that and all we want God for is what he could produce. And I'm just saying the power of prayer is talking to God because of who he is. And, 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 and what I'm saying is when you communicate with God daily, when you humble yourself, when you turn from your wicked ways and God starts to hear you, then he starts to heal you. And then you start to turn the conversation from a monologue into a dialogue. And then you become a person of prayer. And I can tell you something, that there are things that I'm not qualified for that God has allowed me to do because I have an open line of communication with the Father. He speaks to me things that I'm supposed to do that I don't even know how to do. But God allows me to run a, a, a large corporation. 
He allows me to speak on stages to thousands of people. How do you do that? It's because I'm always talking to the one who created everything. How, how do I walk in rooms with CEOs and bank presidents and able to give them wisdom? Because I'm connected to the one with all wisdom. How? Oh, y'all better help me. How am I able? How am I able to be sensitive in a situation I've never been in before? Because the Bible tells us that Jesus, he walked through everything we had to walk through. So he knows everything what we've gone through. And when I'm connected to him and I'm talking to him, he'll give me wisdoms and situations that I've never been in before. But I have to always, everybody say pray. Pray. 